and there were 28 people for some reason. So it was like New York style yoga, mats on, almost on top of each other. And there was no space for my mat. So I was just talking the whole class and it's an exercise for many people to just listen. Okay, that's good. Which on one side um, allows you from, from not thinking about other things because if you start to think about other things then you lose track of what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, but of course it's, uh, yeah. Oh, hi Laurie. Cool. Hi, wife. He's oh, coming. hi. <laughs> He's on his way. And then Isabel will join as well. So this is a, a good... Uh, Hi, Laurie. And what is your name? Betty. Uh, Debbie? Okay. Betty, yeah. So, um, Betty, do you have any injuries? Or no. anything I should pay extra attention to? No, I'm good. Okay, good. Thank you. So I just want to know, because often I can, during the class, just say, in, in the previous class, there were two uh -huh. severe um, uh, shoulder injuries. So I would point it out at the alternatives. But for us, we can just do what we need yeah, to no, do. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. OK. So and Monica, for you, it's really finding that extension in the spine. Eh? Yeah. So really, even if you keep I know it's always fun when you can have your legs all stretched out, your heels on the floor with downward dog. It's like, yes, <laughs> one of those feelings. Uh -huh. But for you, especially finding that length into the spine, keeping the knees eventually bent so you can really lift your hips a little bit higher. While in downward dog, you mean? In, yeah, in downward dog, yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. No resources. Hello. Perfect. So I think everybody's there. Um, I'm, is there anything special you wanted to do today or any questions or um, anything you want to say? No. Because I'm gonna, no. mute, I'm gonna mute you all. Otherwise the screen keeps on uh, jumping back and forward. So if like, again, you, if you don't want to be on the video, that's okay. I, I'm, I'm a little bit more in the back and I just have small views of you. So um, it's really up to you. And if you want to stay with the video on or off, if there is anything during the class and you need my attention or you just wave, I can see that from my mat. Or uh, if you really have an urgent question, you can unmute yourself and, and just ask me, okay? How are you, Isabel? Good, good. thank you. Okay, good, cool. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna mute you all and then we're gonna, we're gonna start. Um, if someone else is joining, they'll just hop in. So enjoy the class. And thank you for being here. And I'm recording this class and I will send it to all of you after. Okay. So we're going to start in um, a child's pose just to be able to connect with our breath to start with. So I, I will just point a few things out. So the knees as wide as your mat, the big toes together. If your ankles are stiff, you can put a little towel underneath so that you're not just holding onto your toes. If your knees are painful, you can take a blanket and just, first of all, place something under your knees if that's where it's hurting, or if it's more like the stretch in the knees, then you put a blanket here so that you're a little bit higher and you can find a more relaxation, relaxing pose. So wherever you are, that's where you are. It's your practice, it's not mine. And if you feel like doing something else, if you need to stretch your little toe, go for it. So in our child's pose, we want to have the forehead on the floor or on something. So if your forehead is really far away from the floor, that your neck is bending. So we don't, we don't want to have a bend in the neck. You place a, a blanket or a towel underneath your forehead so you can relax from here. Then we're going to start to take deep breaths in and long breaths out. Your arms can be to the back. 
So dropping the shoulders, letting the back open up. And with every inhale, maybe even feeling the ribs in the back expanding. And then every exhale, sinking a little bit deeper into this pose. Let's be here for three more breaths. And then slowly starting to reach your arms forward. Have a, lift your head up and have a look at your hands. So you really wanna separate the fingers. The thumbs are almost pointing towards each other. And then next you have a look at the inside of your elbow and see if you can roll the inside of your elbow a little bit more up to the sky. So rolling the elbows out, you should feel an opening in your upper back and the shoulders are rolling out. And then press into your hands and very gently come up onto all fours. So we're going to bring the knees behind the hips and the hands a little bit more to the front of the mat. And then come into a plank onto your knees. <clears throat> so we're just warming up the body before we're going to start moving a little bit more. So plank onto your, knee, onto your knees, your abs are active, press into your hands. So you don't want to sink in between the shoulders. It's almost as if you're pushing the upper part of your spine uh, to the sky. One thing to remember is that your spine goes from your tailbone all the way to your skull. So don't start to do crazy things with your neck unless we're specifically doing a stretch in the neck. Otherwise, always let the neck follow the curves of the spine. So from here, let's take a breath in and then exhale, press into your hands, push your hips back, lengthen the spine. Again, roll the shoulders out so the eye of the elbow comes to the sky. Take a breath in, exhale, press your hips a little bit more to the back. So that's the extension we're looking for in downward dog. So don't sink into your lower back. Keep the, the, the core active and then inhale, come back to the front. Let's do this two more times. So warming up the joints of the wrist, wrists, <laughs> the shoulders, the hips, and the knees. So moving with your breath. And then coming all the way back onto hands and knees. So this time, bring the wrist underneath the shoulders, the knees underneath the hips. If your wrists are hurting, you can always come onto your fists. We're gonna open up the right knee to the right, flex the right foot so the knee is at the height of the hip. And now bring the knee towards the right elbow and then bring it back to the left knee. Just hover and then lift it up. So it's a long, oh, it's a slow movement and we're rotating into the hip joint. So one more time this direction and then changing direction just opening, creating some movement into the hip. If your left elbow bends, that's okay. Don't worry about that. And then bringing the right knee down. So same thing with the left. So first of all, flex your foot, lift your knee, open at the height of your hip. And then bring the knee towards the elbow, towards the other knee, lift it up and a big circle. So three times this side and then the other side, three or four times. And then changing direction. And then bringing both knees together. So wrists underneath the shoulders, hips, on, hips above the knees. We're gonna go for five rounds of cat and cow. So moving the spine and really think about one vertebrae, almost like a domino game, like one vertebrae is giving the direction for the other, for the next one. So inhale, lift the tailbone, drop the belly button, roll the shoulders back. Your heart is reaching forward and then eventually your neck is following the curve of your spine and you're looking forward. 
As you exhale, tailbone down, belly button up. <clears throat> Rounding the spine, so press into your hands, your shoulders come forward and eventually your chin comes to your chest. Now go for four more rounds at your own rhythm, the rhythm of your breath. This is a perfect movement to do when you wake up in the morning or if you had a hard day and you feel your back is like hurting, just moving with the breath. And then last time, and coming to neutral spine. We're going to stretch out the right leg, keep the toes on the floor, keep your hips parallel with the front of them with the mat and then press your heel back so stretching out that back leg and then coming back so your toes are still on the floor reach your left arm forward and lift your right leg so you don't want to go too high here your toes are pointing slightly in so that your hips remain parallel to the floor your core is active you're reaching that left arm forward that right heel back maybe you're even feeling a diagonal stretch And then bend your right knee and grab your um, right foot with your left hand. So strong supporting arm. If you can't grab your foot, grab your pants. Or if you can't do either, then place your left hand on the floor and just lift your leg up. If you're holding on to your foot or your pants, lift your tie up. So curving the spine. And then roll the left shoulder back by pulling the right foot back. So you should feel a um, stretch in the quads, maybe an opening in the left shoulder and then a strong supporting right arm. And then exhale, release, bring the left hand down, right knee down and come into child's pose just for two breaths. So just relax back, take a breath in, maybe exhale through the mouth. And one more. And then coming back onto all fours. So readjusting, stretching the left leg out. So for a moment, you really want to push that heel back so that you can find length into that leg. <clears throat> and then coming back, reaching the right arm forward, lifting the left leg. If your balance is not present today, keep your toes slightly on the floor as a support. So you want to feel that stretch from the right fingertips till the left heel. And then bend your left foot, a left knee, grab your left foot, your pants, or keep your leg lifted. And this time, pulling the foot back, lifting the thigh, opening the right shoulder. And then slowly coming back down, both knees on the floor and exhale, child's pose. So you can keep your arms to the front or to the back, whatever you need for your shoulders and sink into this pose. And then let's inhale, come back up. This time placing the forearms on the floor and coming onto your belly. So your shoulders and your elbows are in one line and you don't wanna have your elbows wider than your shoulders. Your palms are facing down, press your forearms into the floor. Your pubic bone is resting onto the floor, roll the shoulders back. So the weight of your hips is gonna keep your lower body in place and we are gonna open in the lower back. So. Press your hands down and as if you wanted to pull your mat back, you reach your heart forward. And again, your neck is following the natural curve of your spine. So you're not looking up, you're not looking down. You just let the neck place itself in the same direction as your spine. 
as the, all the vertebrae. So sphinx pose. There's quite a lot of effort in the biceps here to pull that mat back, to pull the shoulders back. Just feel a nice opening in the chest and the lower back. Maybe you feel it, maybe you don't. You should feel no pain, no strain in the lower back. So it's really an opening from this lower vertebra. And then release. Let's tuck our toes, come onto our hands and knees. Gonna do one shoulder opener. So you can stay here. We're gonna inhale, open up to the left. So reach your left arm up, press your right hand down for the moment. So a slight rotation in the spine and then exhale, bring that left arm underneath the right, reach out, palm cam facing up, and then you come onto your left shoulder and left ear. So if the floor is too far for your shoulder, then you're gonna place something underneath, a blanket or a block. And then your right arm is gonna start to reach to the front. So let the gravity play here. Watch out that your hips don't fall to the right, so your hips Remain in line with your knees and your feet. And we're just gonna let the whole weight of our body open the back of our shoulder. If reaching the right arm forward is not comfortable, you can place both palms on top of each other. You can also open up the arm towards the sky. But when we do this, we, ha we will have a tendency to wanting to reach the sky and lift up from our left shoulder. So. See if you can really keep that weight. If this is painful, please get out. So there should never be pain in yoga. Discomfort is okay, but pain, no way. And then place the right hand in front of your face, press up and come back into all fours. And now you wanna do the movements that feels good to you. So I like to do some cat and cow here, some movement. Just realigning my spine a little bit. And then back onto hands and knees and this time opening towards the right. So it's not so much about the rotation, it's just about creating that space, lifting up, pressing into your supporting arm and then swing your right arm underneath the left. Palm is facing to the sky. Come onto your right elbow, right ear. And then you can reach your left arm forward or whatever other position that is comfortable for you. So that left arm forward is creating an extra stretch, but the main purpose of this movement is to open the back of your right shoulder. So bringing all the weight down. So with every exhale, we let go. And then placing your hands, your left hand in front of your face and coming all the way back up. Walking your hands towards the front. So we're gonna move into downward dog, but I want you to move slowly. So spreading out the fingers again, rolling the eye of the elbows to the front so that you're opening your upper back, tucking the toes and for a moment, just hover your knees. So we're pressing into our hands. We're trying to create that length in our spine Lots of work in the legs, most probably. So try not to curve your spine or compensate by pressing your belly button up. So neutral long spine and then bring the knees back down. Take a breath in. And then now with your knees bent, start to lift your knees. So maybe start to lift your hips. So maybe you need to adjust your feet a little bit. They're as wide as your hips. Roll the shoulders out. So eye of the elbows to the sky and then bring your head in between your arms. Lift your hips up. So we're trying to really create that length into the spine. If you have tight hamstrings, you might want to stay with your knees bent. Because if your hamstrings are tight and you're going to lengthen out your legs, your lower back is going to round automatically. So you want to keep that spine as neutral as possible, as long as possible. And then start to walk your dog. So bending one knee, the other knee, just walking, but keeping the length into the spine. 
So if you feel that you're kind of collapsing into the upper body, bend your both knees, press into your hands, lift your hips, find it again. So readjusting every time. And then let's bend both knees, lift your hips up, lengthen the spine and both legs straight if accessible for you. So just play a bit. Bend your knees, lift your hips, lengthen the spine, and then maybe stretch out the legs. But observe what happens in your lower back. So very often as we really want to reach the heels to the floor, and it's possible if your ankles are very flexible, if your calf muscles are long, then you probably have no problem to reach down. But maybe you're pulling a little bit too much onto your hamstrings, and then your lower back is going to run. So the spine remains neutral into this pose. And then from here, let's lift the right leg up as high as you can. Bend the right knee and bring the right foot in between your hands. Drop the left knee down. You want to have your right knee on top of your right ankle, not behind. So you, because otherwise it's too much bent into your knee. And then inhale, come up, place your hands onto your thigh. So the primary movement here, what we're looking for is to create opening into the front of the left thigh. So drop your hips down. So don't press it down necessarily. If this is too much in the front of your left thigh, then you place your hands down and you walk your knee a little bit more forward. If you want more sensation, then you bring your knee a little bit more back. But you don't want to press down. You just want to let gravity play. So if you're stable and you say, okay, I got it. This is just letting go. Then you can raise your arms up, maybe interlacing your fingers. And then see if you can roll the shoulders forward, uh, outward, so that the armpits are facing to the front. You can also do this purely by bringing the palms to the front to really open that chest, shoulder blades are falling down. So inhale is lengthening, exhale, dropping into the hips. Lengthening from the hips, so it's not that we push into the feet. Inhale and exhale. And then exhale, bring the hands down. Walk your hands back, press your toes into the mat. So. Maybe your leg is not going to be super straight. We're stretching the front of our foot. Maybe for some of you, the back of the ankle. See if you can lengthen your spine. You might feel something into your hamstrings. And then this time, lift your toes. Come on the back of your heel. And your leg is straight this time. So if this is too low, for you and you're really rounding, I would suggest that you take some books or some blocks if you have some and then really lengthening out and exhale coming down. So watch out that you stay very stable in your hips. So we don't, sometimes we wanna go further and we start to do crazy things with the hips. It's okay, but that's not like we're kind of avoiding what we really wanna do. And then slowly bring the foot back down. Bring your hands down, lift your back knee, and let's come into our plank. So plank on the knees if you need to, or full plank. So make sure your tailbone goes towards your heels and you don't sink in between your shoulders. So press into your hands, lengthen the neck again so that it's in line with your spine, with the rest of your spine. And then bring the knees down, elbows moving to the back, shoulders are moving back, chest down and chin down. Your bum is up in the air. And then press your hands back and come into your first cobra. So let's do a gentle cobra. Again, no need to look forward. Working the muscles of the lower back. So we're gonna strengthen them a little bit. And keeping the hands onto the floor. Inhale, maybe come a little bit higher. If you want, you can lift your hands. Again, don't start to look forward. We don't wanna create a bend in the neck. Keep on breathing. If you stop breathing, you're probably a little bit too far. And then place your hands back onto the floor, tuck your toes, press into your hands and come into your downward dog. <clears throat> Walk your dog a few times. 
But make sure that your upper body, your spine is long and neutral. And then exhale, full downward dog. Eventually becomes a very relaxing pose, your go-to pose to feel your whole body working, strengthening, stretching, relaxing. You don't have to believe me. And then let's lift the left leg up as high as you can. So keep equal weight into both your hands as you do this. And then exhale, bring the left foot in between your hands, right knee on the floor. Untuck your toes or tuck your toes, whatever is more comfortable, and then slowly come up. Inhale, exhale. So again, releasing into that hip, letting go. Don't push down, otherwise we're overstretching. It's really the top of your hip, the, the groin area that we're opening here. You don't wanna not be able to do any stairs or walk tomorrow. And then if you want, reaching the arms up, you can also, also always bring them in a cactus to open your chest a little bit more or interlace. So it's the lengthening from the hips all the way up. And then dropping a little bit more into the hips. And then exhale, bring the hands down, press the toes into the floor and walk your hands back. So long spine, maybe you have different sensations one side to the other, nobody's symmetric. We're aiming for symmetry, um, but the full symmetry will never be possible. So if you feel that one side is a little bit less flexible than the other or less strong, Pay more attention to that side. We often pay attention to the side that works the best. And then lift your toes this time, stretch out your legs, maybe bring your arms a little bit more back. If you can, you can go down a little bit more to feel that stretch in the hamstrings a little bit more, but don't force it. And then walk your hands forward, place the hands down, tuck your back toes, and let's go back into our plank. You can do knees, chest, chin, chaturanga or chaturanga, whatever you prefer. <clears throat> and then inhaling cobra or upward facing dog. So if you're in cobra now, make sure your shoulders are back and down. Your chest reaches forward. Your pubic bone is still on the floor. So it's not about lifting. Yes, I can lift very high, but my hips are off the floor. So I want to maybe keep my elbows bent. I don't want to feel any pain in my lower back. My tailbone is going down. If you're in upward facing dog, you're on the top of your feet, you roll the shoulders back and it's just your feet and your hands that are touching. And you want to reach your heart forward as well. So creating space into the lower back. And then exhale, slowly moving into your downward facing dog. Walk your dog a few times. Exhale, both legs straight if accessible. And this time we're gonna lift the right leg up, bend the right knee and open your hips towards the right. So things to pay attention to, the lower back. So very often as we push our, our right foot back, we're gonna curve in the spine. So again, keep that long spine. So equal weight into both your hands, long spine. Open the hips so the hips are stacked on top of each other. If you look under your left armpit, you should be able to see your right foot. And then inhale, lift that right leg up and bring the right foot in between your hands. This time we're going to keep the knee off the floor unless you need a little bit more balance. And then place your left hand on the floor, wrist underneath the shoulder and reach your right arm forward. <clears throat> so really reaching forward and then start to rotate into your spine so that eventually your palm is gonna face to the right. So long upper body, press the back heel back. If the floor is too far away from you again, make sure you have a block or a book 
close by so that you can come up a little bit higher. If this is too much, come onto your knee. You will have an extra stretch in the groin area. So reaching up, reaching forward. You can even start to slowly go back, but watch out if, you've, if you have very flexible shoulders, you might just throw your arm back. So see if you can just push and open up your chest here. And then exhale, place the hand down. Walk your right foot to the right. So your both hands are on the inside of your right foot. And again, lengthen your spine. So reaching the heart forward. Here you can definitely place the foot onto the floor <clears throat> or keep it lifted. But sensations will be very similar. You want your knee to continue pointing towards your toes. So if you decide to open your hip by lifting the inside of your foot, your knee is going to follow. So make sure that stays always in line, your foot and your knee. Do not create crazy rotations into your uh, knee. If you want to go for more, for a, a deeper stretch, you're starting to bend your elbows, but it's not rounding the spine. The spine remains long. Your elbows are going back. Eventually you can come onto your forearms or maybe not, or maybe on a block, but it's mainly about the sensations in the legs and a long spine. And then slowly come back up, walk your right foot back in position, left, tuck your left toes, lift your back knee if it was on the floor and come back into your plank. <clears throat> Knees, chest, chin or chaturanga in both ways. El the eye of the elbow comes to the front, you bend your elbows and then you roll over your toes if you're going up into upward facing dog and then rolling back down and facing dog. Do whatever movement you need for now. And then coming back into that beautiful, delightful downward dog, lifting the left leg up. So keep that um, alignment in your whole body, bending the left knee and opening up towards the left. So left hip is stacked on top of the right hip, neutral spine, press equally into both your arms. And then lift your leg up again and bring the left foot in between your hands. So keep the knee lifted right wrist underneath the right shoulder, reach your left arm forward. The reason we do this is to really create that length from your fingertips to your back heel. And then start to lift, keep looking at your hands. So eventually you're gonna rotate into the spine, turning the palm towards the left. Strong supporting arm, strong legs, opening, and you can eventually go a little bit more to the back. And then slowly coming down, walk your left foot out. So option to bring the right knee down, both hands on the inside of your left foot. Again, if you decide to open your hips, so by dropping your knee out, make sure the foot and the knee remains in one line. Roll the shoulders back, pull your heart forward. And then if you want, coming down a little bit more. Continue to breathe calmly. And then slowly coming back up, walk that left foot back to the center, tuck your back toes, lift your back knee and come back into your plank. So always an option to come into child's pose or knees, chest, chin, inhale, Cobra, exhale, downward facing dog. <clears throat> We're gonna go into side plank. So side plank 
really works the obliques of your core. So we work the lower back already by doing cobra without our hands. We'll do, we're using the abdominals all the time in yoga. We might not realize it, but so from here, let's move into plank. So if your wrists are really tired, I strongly suggest you bring, you bend your left elbow and fingers will point to the, the right corner. So your left fingers point to the right corner. Your left elbow is under your left uh, shoulder. Otherwise, if from your plank, you're gonna flip onto the outside of your left foot, right foot on top or to the front. Don't bring your foot to the back or you're gonna open up a little bit too much. So <clears throat> you wanna make sure that your wrist is underneath your shoulders to have the very good alignment. And then reach your right arm up, press your hips up and forward. If this is too much for you, bring the left knee down in line with your left hand. Foot is going to the back and then you go in a supported side plank. And then you can lift and you will work those obliques as well. So you can lift your leg. If you're in full side plank, you can do that as well. And then bring it down. And we're gonna move immediately to the other side. So roll over to your, the outside of your right foot, left foot on top or in front, reaching up or right knee on the floor, right foot is pointing out, everything is in one line and then you open up. And then slowly coming back into a plank, bring the knees down. I'm gonna give those wrists a little bit of rest. Come into child's pose, bring your arms to the back. So your shoulders are gonna drop down. You can move your wrists a little bit. Maybe make little circles, open and closing the hand. Taking a few breaths here. So we'll slowly move into standing from here. So from your child's pose, Reach your arms forward again. Come into your downward dog. And then we're gonna walk our hands towards the feet. So we're walking backwards. Place the heels onto the floor as soon as you can. And then fold forward. So if your hamstrings are, are stiff, that when you fold forward, your lower back is hurting, please bend your knees a little bit. So you don't want to have any feeling into your lower back. Grab the opposite elbows to create an impression of a little bit more weight, a little bit more dropping. Take a breath in, let the head maybe move, yes, no. Taking advantage of the weight of our head to open our spine, our neck. Every exhale maybe sink a little bit deeper. And again, your legs don't have to be super, super straight here. Now we're gonna work a little bit more onto those legs. So keep your feet really solidly planted into the floor and then place your hands a little bit more to the front. So maybe you're on your fingertips, maybe you're flat on the floor. And then walk your hands a little bit more, press the heels down. So your, your spine is rounded now, that's okay. Relax your knees, except if you have um, hyperextension. So meaning that your joints, are like instead of being a straight leg, you're actually bending in the reverse side. So then you wanna keep your knees a little bit bent and you wanna activate your quads and kneecaps. And then walk a little bit more forward, keep on pressing. You should feel a nice stretch into the calf muscles. Maybe for you, it's into the hamstrings. Again, you have to be able to breathe. And then walk a little bit more. We're not in downward dog yet. We're almost there. So press those heels back. And now start to slowly walk your feet towards your hands. 
Bend your knees, lengthen your spine, and come all the way up. And exhale. Whew. So shake it out again, those wrists. Maybe the feet a little bit. So we'll do a first balancing pose if, so we'll do the one with the, where we open the hips as well. So if you know that your balance is not the greatest, you might wanna to come to a wall. So be about a foot away from the wall and then place your bum and your shoulders or your shoulder blades against the wall. <clears throat> Otherwise, we're gonna stand with the feet a little bit wider than the hips. And so when I say wide, the width of the hips is really the hip bone that's here in front. And that goes straight down to the center of your feet. So we are a little bit wider now. Placing the hands onto your hips, bend your knees slightly. And then bring the weight into your left leg. Lift your right knee and open your hip, open your knee and then place your ankle. So above your ankle comes above your knee. There's like a little nook that you should be able to find. So if you're against the wall, your bum is still against the wall, your shoulder blades also still against the wall. And then you start to bend your knee. So the more you're gonna bend your knee, the, the closer we are to the floor, whew, the lower your center of gravity. The thing with balancing is that you really can't think about anything else or do anything else. And then from here, bring your hands in front of your heart. You want to bend from your hip crease. So you don't want to just round the spine. You want to really find that, that charnière, that hip crease, that hinge there, and then fold forward. So here, if you are against the wall and you want to go forward, you can keep your bum against the wall. So you're not really leaning, it's just a support. You are still gonna find that opening into the hips. If you wanna then explore a little bit your balance, bring your fingertips against the wall and push yourself slightly off, but keep your fingertips on and then you can go more down. So for the moment, let's keep that straight back. If you wanna go further, you can let your arms drop down eventually touching the floor. So you will have to bend your supporting leg a little bit more. And then you have to dare to place your hands flat on the floor and maybe lift your back heel. So good, good opening into the hips. And then very slowly and with a lot of elegance coming all the way back up and release. So if you're falling out of any balances, I would really recommend that you start from the start. So don't, uh, I'll just give an example of the tree. You're here and you're here and you fall out and we continue, continue to try here. Just start from scratch again so that you can really find your foundation again. Otherwise your house is gonna crumble every time. So let's go to the other side. Know that one side can be very different than the other. <clears throat> so hands onto the hips. Bend your knees, weight into the right leg. So take your time to build your foundation. Lift your knee and open the hip, open the knee. Maybe bend your knee a little bit more. If you're falling out, if your leg is not staying there, just maybe place one hand against the wall or on a chair. And start to bend. And then again, from your hip crease, folding forward. So this is optional. The balance part is here. Here we're gonna open in the hips as we do this. You can always do this on a chair during your day. If you're working, you do the same placement of your feet and you basically are gonna bend from your hip crease forward. So it's gonna give you a very good stretch into the hips without the balance part. And if you want to let go of your arms, so bring them maybe at a certain moment, you have to dare, unless you're very bended into the right knee, you dare and you fall almost forward and then you can lift your back heel. And then very slowly coming all the way up and release, shake it out. 
<clears throat> so let's go and stand in Tadasana mountain pose. Just observe your body for a moment. Observe your breath. And then let's go to the front of the mat. Take a breath in and a breath out. <coughs> I'm sorry. Placing the hands onto your hips. <clears throat> Take a big step back with your right foot. So position your feet into warrior one. Hips almost parallel with the front of your mat. Back heel presses back. And then start to bend in your front knee. So continue to lengthen that back leg without shifting the hips. So the hips really remain to the front. Press your back heel back. If you need to walk your foot forward so that your knee doesn't go past your ankle, please do so. Take a breath in and then at your arms. So I'm gonna give you some more options here. So you can interlace, you can open, you can cactus. You can also bring your hands in the back and open up your chest. We eventually are gonna come there for the next move. But if you feel that you need to open your chest a little bit more, go for it. So strong, strong legs here. If you feel you compressing your lower back, tuck your tailbone a little bit. So bring the tailbone down. Most probably your right knee is gonna bend it. So find that balance. Eventually the quads are gonna stretch enough so that you can have your spine neutral and your back leg straight. Next exhale, bring the arms down if they're down. Interlace in the back, roll the shoulders back, lengthen your arms. Take a deep breath in. So really find length into your spine, press into your back foot and reach forward. We're coming on the inside of our right leg, our, our left leg. So the goal is not to go all the way down. We wanna keep the spine straight. We wanna open those shoulders. Shoulder blades are glued to each other, opening the chest. Neck is part of the spine. And then release the hands, bring the hands down, start to lengthen your front leg. <clears throat> and we stretching the hamstrings. So this might be a lot for you. So maybe you need to come up a little bit higher. And then lift your back heel, walk your hands a little bit more to the front. You can hop your back heel a little bit more to the, to the front as well. And then lift your right leg up, balancing and forward fold. And as you exhale, take a big step back and position your foot for warrior two. And then windmill, right arm comes up, left arm follows, and you're in your warrior two. This is a nice little combination. <clears throat> so outside of the back foot presses down as if your legs are compressing to the center, but at the same time, your feet are pressing down. See if you can find that combination. Maybe you can go a little bit deeper. Roll the shoulders back, shoulder blades down. So you wanna stretch out from your armpits to the fingertips and then gaze to your left hand. So gazing is looking at nothing. Turn the front, the front palm, the left palm up and then inhale, reach up. Glide your right arm hand alongside your leg. You can also bend your elbow and grab the left thigh through the back. So finding that opening on the left side. Keep the legs as they are. And then coming back into your warrior two. This time inhale, lengthen both legs. Bring your left hand into your left hip crease and press your hips back. So you should really feel that your hips are moving. The limitation is most probably gonna be the inside of your left thigh here. So you're only gonna go as far as is okay for your left thigh. Maybe that's not your limit. Maybe there's another limit. 
<clears throat> right hip is lifting and then bring your left hand somewhere on your leg but don't collapse into your upper body so the goal is to remain very long into the upper body and then reach your right arm up make sure you don't fall forward so we're in between two walls so if you need to come a little bit higher come a little bit higher and when you're stable you can lengthen both arms you can eventually look up if the neck allows it Keep on pressing into that back foot, strong legs, lengthening, breathing, lots of things to do here. Beautiful pose. And then inhale, coming back up. Exhale, bend the front knee, placing the hands onto the hips and lengthening both legs. This time toes are pointing slightly in and we're just gonna go for transition, just hands into the hip crease and going forward so press your hands into your hip crease so that your hips are pressing back and now reach your heart forward so you don't need to go much low lower we just want to find that length find that pressing back into the hips and then coming back up this time we're going to turn the right foot towards the short side of the mat and adjust your left foot for warrior one. So if you are facing back, you might wanna turn around, <clears throat> placing the hands onto your hips and start to bend your front knee, continuing to press the back foot into the floor, hips almost parallel with the front of your mat. So they will never be 100% parallel because you have one leg back and one leg forward, but as much as possible. And that's the whole movement. So again, playing with that tailbone, explore a little bit what is good for you. For most people, they're perfectly fine as they're coming into the pose. Other people might just start to really curve their spine and then you wanna uh, bring that tailbone down. And then find a position for your arms. Maybe do something different here, maybe a cactus. So cactus, elbows at the height of your shoulders, press your elbows forward, you should feel already an opening into the chest. Watch out for the floating ribs that they don't pop forward. So again, by bringing the tailbone down, your floating ribs will reposition. And then you can press your, for your upper arms back. So it's not the wrists that are bending, it's the whole upper arm. And then exhale, bring the hands in the back, roll the shoulders back, press your back foot into the floor, and reach your heart forward, straight back coming to the inside of your right leg. Maybe you're much higher. You wanna keep that strength, that stability into your legs. They're your anchors. And then let go of your hands. Lengthen your right leg. Maybe you need to adjust that back foot and come into a forward fold. So stretching the hamstrings of the right leg, maybe you also feel something in the left. Most probably you do. Again, trying to get the hips parallel to the front. And then lift your back heel, walk your hands a little bit more to the front and lift your leg up, forward fold. Balancing forward fold. Take a big step back as you exhale to position yourself in warrior two. Windmill your arms up for your warrior two. And take your time again to build your foundation. So if you need to work a little bit more on the hips that are parallel now with the long side of your mat, your knee pointing towards your toes, take your time. Arms are gonna follow eventually. Gaze at your right hand. Turn the front palm. So the right palm up and then we're going there for three breaths. So opening that right side of our body. Maybe bending the knee a little bit more. And then exhale back into your warrior two. Lengthen the front leg, right hand into the right hip crease. Press your hips back. And so keeping that length into your upper body 
Right hand on your right thigh, lift the left leg up, opening up. So your left shoulder goes back a little bit. Explore a little bit into your hips, what can happen. So your back, your, your left hip is, can move backward. Your right bum moves forward. So it's a, it's a derotation actually in our spine. It might feel like a rotation, but we actually bring everything back to neutral, but with open legs. And then slowly coming back up, warrior two, feels nice and relaxed, warrior two now. And then bring the hands on to the hips, bring the feet a little bit closer, not all the way, but uh, hip, um, mat width apart. Those are pointing out this time. And then bring the arms to the front, so I'll just, so what happens very often is that when we reach our arms forward, we, we rounding our upper back. So roll the shoulders back and down. And then from here, let's bend the knees. If you can keep the heels onto the floor, go for it. If this is too much for you, sit onto the floor or sit on a couple of blocks. Place your hands down and we're just gonna move a little bit back and forward. So if your knees are bad, please sit down. We're gonna join you in a minute. <clears throat> and then bring the hands back. Bend your knees and unroll your spine one vertebrae at the, after another. Bring the knees into the chest. Gently roll from side to side. Give your back a little massage. So this should absolutely not hurt. If you have herniated discs, like, don't do this. Like, don't just roll onto painful parts of your body. And if, when we're on the floor, and if you have back problems, put a blanket on your knee. We don't need to have any anti-slip or anything. So just make sure you're comfortable. I wouldn't do this in my bed, but just a blanket is fine enough. Bring your knees into your chest. Separate your knees wider than your uh, chest, your feet are in line with your knees and bring your arms in between your legs. Grab the outside of your feet with your fingers. So if you don't reach there, if your lower back, your sacrum is coming up from the floor, press it back down. So the, you want to keep your spine as neutral as possible. If you're okay to grab your feet or your ankles, fine. If not, like bring your arms behind your thighs and then start to lift your feet up. So we're creating straight corners between in our ankles, in our knees. And then every exhale, we're gonna press our hands into our feet and bring the knees a little bit closer to the floor. But it's not about lifting the bum. And then this time, bring the soles of the feet together. If you can grab your ankles, grab your ankles and see if you can bring the heels closer to your groin, groin area. Just pull for a moment without this time lifting the shoulders up. So we wanna keep this upper body quite neutral. And then bring the outside of the feet down. The soles of the feet are still together. Your hands are coming on the inner thighs and then press your left hand into your left thigh so that the left knee drops down, the right is coming up. And then do the reverse. So press into the right thigh. And so we're wiggling onto our sacrum. We're loosening the lower spine, <clears throat> massaging the hips a little bit. So just very loose. This is shouldn't require any effort. It should be a little bit of fun. So if this is hurting, then you just stay in the center and maybe you wanna find another way that works for you to release a little bit. Place your hands on the outside of your thighs and now bring the legs together. <clears throat> we're gonna bring the right leg over the left as if you were sitting into a chair, opening your arms in a T, lift, your, le your left foot, I had to look, I didn't know anymore which one was lifted. 
and we're going to turn towards the right. So dropping our legs towards the right, the weight of the right leg is going to bring, is going to help us with the rotation. So if this is too much for you, unpretzel your legs and just come down with both legs parallel. So this is a nice weight if you want to. If you can keep your left shoulder on the floor, that's perfect. You're gonna stay here for three, four more breaths. So see if you can release with every exhale. If you just had lunch, maybe this is a little bit too much or maybe this is good for your digestion. If you didn't have lunch, this is all gonna open your appetite. So rotation in the belly, in the lower spine. And then slowly coming back up, lengthen both your legs towards the sky, bend your knees, and this time the right comes over the left. So lift your right foot off, the left comes over the right, I'm sorry, I'm getting confused here. So left leg over the right, and then drop your knees towards the left. So the weight of the left leg is gonna help you to rotate, press that right shoulder into the floor. It's also opening the chest, especially if you have stiff shoulders, this is a really good one. And with your next inhale, coming back to center, Undo your legs, bring your knees into your chest and just gently again, roll from side to side. Let's make a little ball. So lifting the shoulders, lifting the head, grabbing onto your legs, make a little ball. Take a deep breath in. And as we exhale, we're gonna expand in our Shavasana. So take a deep breath in and exhale, release into your Shavasana. So the legs as wide as your mat, flop the feet out. The arms are not glued against your body. They are not open in a T, they're somewhere halfway. And turn the palms up so that your shoulders can really drop back. Nothing has to do anything here. So are you able to do that? Just to relax your forehead and your jaw. Feel the eyelids heavy, the eyes sinking back into your skull. Your lips relax, your, your ears relax. Relax the throat, the chest, the belly. Feeling the back dropping into the floor, maybe feeling in your back where the back touches the floor and where not. Try not to hold in the points where it's touching. Just release, letting go. Shoulders don't have anything to hold for the moment. So Drop your shoulders with your next exhale and continue doing it if necessary. Your arms are relaxed, your palms, your fingers. Your hips are heavy, supported by the floor. Your legs are relaxed and probably happy to relax. Your feet are relaxed, your ankles.
And you're at home, so you can stay here as long as you want, as you need, as you can. If you need to get out, reconnect with your breath at first. And slowly starting to move the toes, very, very slowly and consciously. And bring your focus on your fingers, your palm, your hands, moving gently. Start to make some faces, maybe even opening and closing your eyes. Big smile, little smile. Gently rolling the head from side to side. And then bring the legs closer to each other. Let's take a deep breath in. Bring the arms overhead. Maybe grabbing your hands. Press your heels away. As if you wake up in the morning, stretch yourself out. Maybe wiggling one side, the other side. And then with your next exhale, bring the knees into the chest. Rolling from side to side. And then rolling onto one side, ideally the right side, so your heart doesn't get all the weight, but if the right side is not comfortable, don't do it. This is not the time to feel discomfort. And then slowly pressing your upper hand into the floor and coming up into a comfortable seated position. Taking a deep breath in, feeling maybe, hopefully, the lightness in your spine, the calmness in your breath, the peace in your heart. Bring your hands in front of your heart or one palm on top of the other. Gently tucking your chin. Thank you for sharing your practice for being there and taking care of yourself. I wish you a wonderful week and hopefully I'll see you again next week. Thank you. Namaste.